All right, YouTube. Uh, so today I'm just going to be showing a, a proof of concept here. Uh, this is an old uh, Dietz kerosene lantern here, model 129 or WFS number 129. This here is just diesel from the gas station, it's number two pump diesel. Got uh, a wick in here. There's some wicks because mine is uh, no, it's too short. It needs to be cleaned. It needs to be replaced and trimmed. And I have an empty olive oil container here. And this is just to prove that this is diesel fuel. Yeah. Line this up and fill it. If I can do this without spilling. I have about uh, 60 cents worth of diesel fuel in this fuel can. I went to the pump and put it in here. I just want to try it as a proof of concept before I do this permanently. I figure kerosene is just really well refined diesel. Just like that white comb and gas and white gasoline for your lanterns and stoves and stuff. That's just basically refined Un, uh, leaded ga or yeah, unleaded gasoline from, from the pump. So, let me take this cap off. As you can see, this is diesel fuel, not gasoline. I'll shake it up and show you. It's quite oily. Now I know this holds about 900 milliliters. That's nowhere near in here, so I know I can put all of this in here. I'm just gonna move this more to the edge. So I don't spill it all over my truck. The reason I'm trying to use diesel fuel is, you know, to buy kerosene by the gallon is like, well, gallon jug I believe is about 15 16 bucks and if I can run this on diesel fuel where it's only three bucks a gallon might as well there. So the diesel fuel is in there put this cap back on Trying to put the cap on using the wrong hand. There we go. Now I need to get the globe out so I can replace the wick. So to do that, you basically lift up on this. You lift up on this and you push sideways on the globe. So lift this up, up sideways. And there you go. Then you can take the globe out completely to, to clean it. I'm just going to leave it there. Cap back on the vegetable oil or diesel fuel on the vegetable oil bottle. So to get to the wick, all you do is twist that, pops out. There's that. Here's the burner. Pull this out and should just be able to pull. Hard to do one-handed. I'm gonna put you guys now. I won't put you down. I'll just do it. There. So the wick is out. This one's just too short. So put the wick on the ground there. And this package of wicks, you know, there's six in here. Cost me. Now where did I toss that one wick? I guess I should measure to make sure the wicks are the same width. And they are. So this package of wicks cost me, I think it was like two or three bucks for the pack. To change the wick, just take it, stick it in the bottom of the burner. And then 
you start turning it and it'll draw the wick up just like that. So take the whole wick and as you can see it's already starting to soak up the diesel fuel. Stick it in there. Uh, put this retainer back on. Make sure that that snaps down in both tabs. There's a tab up at the front here, a tab in the back, and then it just needs to be trimmed. Let's see how that wicking is doing. So it's already starting to soak up. Usually you let these sit. I like to let them sit about 20 to 30 minutes. And to trim the wick, I'm just going to use scissors on my multi-tool. Open them up. There we go. I like to raise the wick a little. And then, with the scissors, I like to first cut off all this stuff up here. Where it's all kind of frayed and loose. This is real hard to do with one hand. There we go. Toss that to the side. And then I like to come at this at about a 40, 45. And I snip these corners. I'll snip the corners here and then down here. And then I'll level it off by snipping the little tip up there. So I'll put you guys down, come back once the wick has been soaked up and trimmed. All right, so the wick has soaked up the diesel. So now all I gotta do is light it and put the globe back. So, show how easy this lights. Just as easy as kerosene. Then, gotta put the globe back over it, which it's easy to do uh, one handed, or two hands, not one handed. And then, once it's in there, you just adjust your flame so that it stops sooting. Basically, you adjust it up till you get some soot, adjust it down, and there you go. So you can see the soot kind of coming up in there. Bring the wick down a little. And there you go. So this hurricane lantern has been lit, or kerosene lantern's lit. It's running off of diesel. Seems to be running just fine. So, so there you have it. Kerosene lantern running off of pump two or pump or diesel number two from the gas pump. So once this has been burnt out, my next step is I'm actually going to be trying uh, off-road diesel, number one or red dyed farm, uh, farm diesel. See how well that works in here, because then I'm not having to pay road tax in there for that. So figured I would just give this a try to see how well it works. So we'll come back when I've uh, when it gets darker, and when I can get it into a dark room, and I'll relight it and just show you, you know, how much light it actually puts out in a room. So, I guess uh, we'll come back at that point. Oh, I'm also going to show you guys how to put the flame out on. Ooh, that gets warm. <laughs> how to put the flame out on these? Very easy. Just take your wick and you just bring it down, nice and low. There you go. Come on. There you go. It has now been put out. I'll come back when we get into a dark room. 
All right, so I've gotten a lantern into my basement where I can turn off the uh, the light and show you how much output this actually has. So I'm going to light it. Let's see how quickly that lit up. I'm going to bring that down. Move the globe up. Come on. That's being a bit of a pain. There. Get the globe over it. Get the wick down a bit. Take that off. That was a bit more hassle than I wanted it to be. <laughs> it's easy to do two hands. Again, you set your your wick so that it's smoking or just starting to sit up. And then you drop it down. So, see it's sitting. And you drop the wick down just to where it stops. Now, I'm going to shut off the light and show you how much this actually puts out. As you can see. <laughs> You can see actually, barely, but you can see the room. I can make out the wall. I can make out my shadow. So that's a that's a nice little lantern. Puts out enough, you know, puts out enough light. You know, it's not a lot, but it's enough. Now you have a few of these kicking around in a house and or in a cottage or something, and you can get some decent output into a room. As for smell, I really don't smell anything. It's burning cleanly. So, you know, I don't really smell any 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 diesel fumes or anything like that. I wouldn't want to leave this lit in a in a closed room for long. No. In fact, I'm going to open up the door down here. Now that I don't need a dark. And I wouldn't leave it lit for a long time in a small room without cracking a window open or something and that's with everything or anything combustible you know you want it in a well ventilated area you know old homes used to be very very drafty these new homes nowadays they're they're pretty well off they're pretty tight up you know not a lot of airflow comes through them without windows but it's burning nicely so that's all that matters and next video I'll be showing I'll show you guys how to light up a Coleman white gas camping lantern. Those things are cool too. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment, or subscribe. Take care. I guess one more thing with this Dietz lantern. Just want to show you a quick way to uh, to light them up. I guess you don't have to actually tilt the uh, the globe all the way over to light them up. All you got to do I'll move this out of the way. You just got to pull down on the thumb tab. It'll actually lift up the globe so you can get to the to the wick. And each time before I go to relight it, I like to just quickly take my, you know, a lighter if I'm using a match or something. And I'll just run it along the top of the wick, or maybe my hand sometimes. If I can get a finger in there. Just to, you know, burn or you know, rub off the, the soot and the ash that's on it, give you a clean wick to burn again. And then now that I got a clean wick again, all I gotta do is strike it with your lighter, drop the globe down, and move it down so you've got a you know a nice clean flame. So again you want to get it to where it soots just a little bit. And drop her down. There you go. So that's just a quick way to light these uh, hurricane lanterns and stuff like that. So, to clean these, you do not want to take these globes and run them under uh, soap and water or use window cleaner or anything. All you want to do is take a couple of pieces of newspaper and scrunch it up and round them on the inside to get rid of the soot. Uh, if you use window cleaner or soap and water, you can end up with a residue on here 
that will actually, next time you light it, end up baking onto this and give it a haze and be a very big pain to try and actually clean off later. So, just thought to give you that quick little tidbit.